Hello and welcome to this edition of Political Capital on Bloomberg TV India, the show where Delhi meets Dalal Street. I'm Vivek Law. Today we put the focus on the crucial state of West Bengal, which sends 42 members to the Lok Sabha. This is the third highest tally after UP's 80 and Maharashtra's 48. In the three years period, Mamta Banerjee's Trinamool Congress conquered the long-standing communist bastion, while opinion polls have predicted another strong showing for the Trinamool, the left parties claim that they are regaining some lost ground. First up on the show, Priyal is here with more on what's at stake in West Bengal. Well, it's a battle of 42 seats that will be fought in five phases with the big question there that if Mamta, Banerjee, uh, Mamta Banerjee's Trinamool Congress will remain a front runner. Most experts do, do believe that this is what would emerge in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Of course, as far as left is concerned, it is not expected to make much dent, as experts point out. Uh, BJP has never been a very, uh, had never had a strong foothold as far as West Bengal is concerned. Though they have fielded very strong candidates, it would remain to be seen as to what impact would they really have in adding up numbers for the BJP. Uh, the alliances, however, in terms of Mamta Banerjee categorically has, however, said uh, uh, in public comments, has, has, has commented against uh, Narendra Modi, uh, the prime ministerial candidate of BJP. She's always maintained uh, of uh, looking forward for a federal front. But over the last uh, months or last few months, we've seen that the federal front shape not having or not having a very strong shape and coming forward in a strong shape as yet. Uh, in light of that, it would, of course, be very critical to see as to how the post-poll alliances really come about. And that would really uh, hold key in terms of how West Bengal contributes to the overall Lok Sabha uh, election. So we'll have to wait and watch as to how West Bengal uh, unfolds in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Last month, I spoke to West Bengal's finance minister, Amit Mitra, and he countered the idea that the Trinamool is a party that is anti-business and anti-industry. Mitra also explained why his party is opposed to the UPA government's policy on FDI in multi-brand retail. Our party fought the communists. The communists had closed over 50,000 factories. Capital flight took place from Bengal. Every parameter of industry had been driven to the ground, and we fought them. Mm. So nobody can say that we are against business. In fact, those who were against business ideologically suffered from inner contradictions mm. in trying to bring business and yet saying, we believe in class war. Mm. We got rid of them. Mm. So we can't be anti-business. But we must say, the nature of model that we are following in Bengal today is a unifying model. But you're still averse to FDI and retail, uh, in retail. Well, uh, if you ask me about <coughs> FDI and retail, I must tell you a bit. Everybody, everybody, and I mean it, disagreed with FDI and retail when it came finally down to the wire. I'll give you an example. Mr. S, Dr. S. P. Gupta's report of the government, mm. of the Congress government, said it will, uh, it will dis uh, destroy employer, employment. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the Planning Commission N.K. Singh Steering Committee, who was then the secretary to the government, this very senior man, it says this is not okay. Uh, the group of ministers said it's not okay. Now, if you look at... But you uh, missed out an important report. The one? report that you did. Which I never Long did back, any report. Then you were in Fiki. I don't think I did. I only did a report on the back end. Sure. Not on retail. I you, said you that there's to, got to be... Many, many years ago at that yes. point of time, you had talked about fixing the supply chain, you had talked exactly. about... Exactly, but that is not foreign direct investment retail, and I'll tell you why. Later studies have shown mm. that uh, Walmart, if I can mention the name, is one of the world's largest uh, yes. companies, so we can, I can mention it. You look at the U UNI Global Union study, mm. which is done much later than the time you're talking about. What do they say? Largest class, class action suit, suit ever in American history by women working in Walmart, 1.5 million women got together. So they're being discriminated in wages. Mm -hmm. Now you look at Ms. Chen's work out of National University of Australia on China. Mm -hmm. Even there they found that the minimum wage in China, they were, not, they were violating. Now what has happened at the end of the day? 
Mm. At the end of the day, the government tried to rush this. And that is how partly we left the government. Mm. The system, they put so many constraints because they knew at the heart of hearts that is not too good. Mm. And at the end of the day, it hasn't worked. Mm. And even the Walmart has broken away with its partner mm. and trying to form something on its own. Why? Because the world doesn't feel the same way. But what the world feels the same way is about the entire seven level back end, mm. starting from the farmer to the plate of the consumer. Mm. Now, that does not require foreign direct investment. I started the discussion mm. by saying to you, the 92 or 93% of, of savings convert into investment in India. Mm. What we need is, certainly we look at technology, issues of management, which Indian corporates are getting in large numbers. Mm. I mean, after all, the largest greenfield uh, uh, refinery in the world is in India, made mm. by an Indian entrepreneur. I can give mm. 10 such examples. Mm. So my submission is, every major report in recent times that you see, maybe barring one or two, which have lobbyists, of course. Uh, Washington is full of lobbyists, legal lobbyists. Mm. Every report in India, whether it's N.K. Singh's planning commission report, Dr. S.B. Gupta's planning commission report, whether it's a group of ministers, every one of them said there's a serious question of huge job loss. Time for a quick break here on Political Capital, but up next, will Mamta hold off the left challenge in West Bengal? Has the BJP gained any ground at all in the state? We put those questions to political analyst Amulya Ganguly and Jayanto Ghoshal of the Ananda Bazar Patrika. Welcome back. You're watching Political Capital, the show where Delhi meets Dalal Street. We are discussing the political dynamics in the battleground state of West Bengal. Will Mamta Banerjee emerge as a kingmaker at the centre or is the left making a comeback? Joining me to discuss that is Amulya Ganguly, who's a political analyst, and Jayanto Ghoshal, who's the resident editor at the Ananda Bazar Patrika. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us here on Bloomberg TV India. Mr. Ganguly, let me come to you first, sir. How are you seeing the performance of Mamta Banerjee? Is she going to sweep West Bengal as many polls seem to be predicting? No, I don't think she will be sweeping West Bengal because she has lost some ground uh, because of uh, several missteps that she had taken, uh, that had taken place. So uh, um, she, I believe that she has lost some of the support which she earlier had among the middle class. Although it's probable, it's possible that she retains her support in the rural areas, but the middle class have become disillusioned with her to a, to a considerable extent uh, because of the kind of attitude she sh showed over several incidents of rape in West Bengal, her, the intolerance she displayed uh, when she tried to uh, put in jail uh, uh, several people, including a professor, for uh, posting a uh, cartoon of her on the net and, uh, you know, uh, arbitrarily removing uh, police officers for pursuing rape cases uh, with zeal. So I, the middle class here has become dissolution with her. There's a parallel in this with the Aam Army Party in, West Bing, in, in, in Delhi, where it started off with a lot of support among the middle class, but again the middle class became qu quickly dissolution. It's the same in West Bengal. Besides, she hasn't shown any vision for the state's economic development. So um, it is possible that she will be losing ground, but her advantage is that um, she doesn't face any serious challenge. The left hasn't recovered, and the Congress is uh, going down and down, both at the All India level, and it almost doesn't exist in West Bengal. It is just possible, therefore, that the vacuum which uh, the decline of the Congress and the inability of the left uh, to make any headway, uh, will be uh, filled to some extent by the BJP. But the BJP has always been a very weak party, although it has some support among the middle class, urban middle class, but not in the rural areas. So there is no question of Mamata sweeping the polls, but because of the absence of any uh, substantial opposition, she will do reasonably well. I would say that she will get about say, roughly 30 seats 
uh, out of the uh, 42. So I, I believe that that's what's going to happen. Mr. Ghoshal, do you agree with uh, Mr. Ganguly's assessment? Do you believe she is losing ground and uh, could at best get to 30 and no more than that? Uh, you know, I broadly agree with Mr. Ganguly, the senior and respectable uh, political analyst. But I have my uh, own uh, take. Recently, I met one CPM leader, recently, at Alimuddin Street. And he told me that it is true that the process of dissolutionment has started against Mamta Banerjee, what Mr. Ganguly is also saying. But the, the anti-CPMism is so strong still in the mindset of the Bengalis in Calcutta and uh, in the West Bengal. And 34 years, the hatred against CPM is so strong that when we are going to the local committees, we are saying that we have to overcome that mindset. We have to, again, rebuild the credibility of our party. So it's a long process. And we have from comrade to people, it's a long journey. So they are not uh, also uh, very confident. And I know that this process of dissolution, meant what Dr. Mr. Ganguly is saying, that the space still, uh, can, uh, I mean, uh, BJP is very small party. Percentage of vote can increase in coming election. But that percentage of vote, the increase of percentage of vote, whether it will be translated into seats for BJP, I doubt it. And whether CPM will be beneficiary for that division of vote, that is also, I doubt it, because the strong polarization against CPMism is there. So the process of dissolution may not started. The Bhadralok of urban Calcutta may have some problem with several issues. But the rural Bengal, it's a very peculiar vote pattern nowadays. In Calcutta, we never thought about uh, uh, caste vote and uh, ethnic identity vote politics. We used to see it in Lalu's politics, in Mulam politics. We used to call Ma Ma Muslim and Yadav my politics. But in Bengal, the issue of economic development, what Dr. Amit Mitra told you, that the process of industrialization, I don't know whether they will be able to project the Trinamool Congress as a pro-industry, pro-reform party. But the caste vote consolidation, the scheduled caste vote, OBC vote, uh, Motua community, I am a Bengali, uh, I am a non-resident Bengali, I stay in Delhi, but I never uh, thought about the Motua vote ban. And the CPM leaders, they are saying, now we are also putting Motua candidate. So this ethnic loyalty, what we used to see in northern India, now in Bengal also, it, it has been consolidated. So Mamta can take advantage of this caste and the ethnic identity politics. But whether meeting Mukesh Ambani in Bombay, what is the follow-up? If she can think that the flight of capital from Bengal to Delhi, it happened long back, and if he can re regain the Bengal's prestige, if he can show the direction, till today, there is a perception that Mamta is an ex extension of bad CPMism. Ex Mamta is not following the Buddha Dev Bhattacharya's uh, policy of industrialization. So these are the issues Bhadralok Bengalis of Calcutta, they are talking about. But I don't know, in rural Bengal, the, most of the surveys are saying, ah, why should I uh, disrespect the survey report? Most of the survey, most of the electronic channels they are showing that Mamta will gain um, and, and the number of seats may go till, uh, to 30 seats. I don't know whether uh, the future will determine what future will be. But it is true that the, the Mamta is a successful uh, and political entrepreneur of the discontent of Bengal. She, ha she is an achiever. But in this coming election, the process of dissolution has started. But that doesn't mean that it will be translated in the vote uh, so soon. We have to wait uh, to see the future of Mamta's politics in the assembly election, which actually will take place after two years. But in Lok Sabha election, I think she will be the best beneficiary of West Bengal politics. Mm. Mr. Ganguly, you've looked closely at so many elections. Would you agree that perhaps uh, this time round, uh, economic issues 
are perhaps more dominant than they've ever been. Uh, so whether we talk about inflation, and again, uh, perhaps the effect of that on voting behavior will be felt far more in a West Bengal uh, than in any other part of India. Uh, do you believe that uh, those issues are going to dominate the elections and the voter behavior in West Bengal this time? Uh, undoubtedly. And uh, Mamata made one of the, well, she started off on the wrong foot by um, uh, throwing the Tatars out of, um, out of West Bengal. What she could have done was to sh say that the CPM under Buddhadev Bhattacharya had learned the huge mistake the, uh, the, um, the, it made when the, fly, uh, when, uh, when the flight of capital took place uh, after the left's coming to power in 67. And Buddha Dev, after, I mean, he was the only communist who realized the mistake which the communists were making and tried to reverse the process, something on the lines of Deng Xiaoping in China. But uh, unfortunately, instead, instead of uh, saying that Buddha Dev had at last seen the light, she followed and, I mean, um, uh, the old communists of the 60s and 70s who were known for their uh, anti-industrial um, uh, attitude, industrialist attitude, when Gerao, as the Buddha Dev Bhattacharya pointed out, uh, had entered the English uh, dictionary. But she, so she, she, she botched her own case, and since then she has shown no sign that she had learned from her mistakes. On the other hand, it is Buddha Dev who, instead of sticking to the, uh, the right path which he, had, uh, which he had adopted, has said in a recent interview uh, that uh, the communists uh, will um, oppose uh, the uh, neoliberal, so called neoliberal policies of both the Congress and the BJP. So he has uh, so, sort of, he's backtracking probably under pressure from the uh, hardliners in his party who have never gone along with him. But Mamata on the other, I mean, both are uh, in that sense an anti-industrialist. Anti and that is a pity because West Bengal was one of the foremost industrial <coughs> states uh, in India in the 50s. Uh, but now I don't see any hope of it recovering that position. And, and the uh, responsibility for it lies both with the uh, CPM first and then with Mamata, who has shown no vision at all. And her other disadvantage is that she lacks sophistication. That is something which has also put off the middle class voters. So it's, it's, it's a sad story, but she is in a way there by uh, default so to say, because there's nobody else. Mr. Ghoshal, so far, the stand that she has maintained is that she is not going to support uh, either the Congress or the BJP post polls, but, uh, and, and, and continues to seem to have national ambitions. The fact that she's putting up candidates, not just out of West Bengal, but from various parts of the country. H how do you see that playing out? Uh, in a post poll scenario, which way do you see her leaning? She's so far, come out very strongly and said, I'm not going to support uh, a potential Narendra Modi-led government. Which way do you see her moving? You see, I think uh, what she said, actually, that everything is prepaid. Uh, nothing is prepaid, everything is postpaid. That she <laughs> said in Delhi's press conference. I think, so far, West Bengal politics is concerned. In the West Bengal politics is concerned, Mamta Banerjee cannot go with Narendra Modi directly because uh, in West Bengal, the Muslim vote is near, uh, near about 30 percent. And after two years, assembly election is knocking at the door. And once uh, she burns her fingers. So I think for her, Modi, without Modi, if they can uh, replace Naren Modi and somebody else can be the prime ministerial candidate, then I don't know what will happen in a hypothetical situation. But so far, Naren Modi is concerned, Mamta cannot say yes. That is a, it's a, it's a very crystal clear now. But so far, Congress is concerned, before election, she had an opportunity to go with Congress, but she didn't go because she knows the strong anti-incumbency against Congress. What uh, Mr. Ganguly is also talking about, this price rise, inflation, 
corruption and so many issues and that there is a nationwide anti-congressism. It happens in our Indian uh, political history in uh, 67, 1977, 1989. So it's a repetition of history. So this time it's a, there is a strong anti-congressism milieu and Mamta Banerjee is not uh, uh, be party to that Congress uh, family before election. But after election, I don't know. She doesn't have any problem uh, to go with Congress after election. But if Congress, uh, I mean, it will depend on the number of seats, what uh, seats Congress will gain. But if there is a, the possibility of BJP government led by Naren Modi, it is very difficult for Mamta to support the government issue to issue from outside also. Mm. So I, I think in that scenario, she can follow the Navin Patnaik model. And she can um, uh, uh, develop constitutional relationship, very good relationship, like Buddha Dev Bhattacharya's relationship with Mr. Radwani as Deputy Prime Minister and the BJP government. She can also follow that way. But she cannot be party to NDA again. That will be disaster for her own politics that she understands. So I think uh, this... Um, Politics, Mamta Banerjee, uh, the, that's the sophistication, what Mr. Ganguly is saying, that there is a lack of sophistication. But you have to admit that the subaltern leaders, among the subaltern leaders, like Lalu, Mulam, they also had lack of, lack of uh, sophistication. But Mamta has an uh, understanding of politics also very strong. She knows uh, when uh, she has to uh, be with whom. These are the political, and, and she is the one-person party. So she can dictate the decision also. In CPM, there are a lot of Jyotibas who wanted to be Prime Minister and CPM didn't allow. But in Trinamool Congress, Mamta Banerjee is the uh, leader who will take the call. So I think in the coming scenario, Mamta Banerjee, if it is, it is not difficult to go with Congress, but it, is, it will be very difficult to go with BJP. And uh, she cannot go with Narendra Modi. It is very clear now. Mr. Ganguly, my final question to you, sir. Do you see the BJP or Narendra Modi factor at all playing out in West Bengal? Or do you believe that uh, it's not a state where yet they are going to make any dent whatsoever? Uh, I think uh, BJP will gain ever so slightly. It, it really doesn't exist in West Bengal. never existed. But uh, uh, there is a slight um, support it has among the urban middle class. So in that sense, because the Congress has gone down and the left hasn't uh, come up, BJP will step into the resultant vacuum. So uh, in that way, it will be, uh, but it will be a very small, uh, a small role that it will play. In fact, uh, amounting to very little political influence. Uh, but there it is. I mean, it will, uh, it will make its uh, sort of presence felt in West Bengal uh, to a greater extent than before. And as for Mamata and Congress, you see, the Congress, as A.K. Antony has said, would like, to, uh, would like to have an alliance with the left. And if the left is, is seen to be uh, inclining towards the Congress, then, of course, <coughs> Mamata will have nothing to do uh, with the Congress. So that's another point that has to be kept in mind. All right, we leave it there. Thank you very much, Mr. Ganguly. Thank you, Mr. Ghoshal, for joining us and sharing your perspective with our viewers.